Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. Today I'm going to share with you the big gluten-free diet mistake number one that everyone seems to make. And that is when they stop eating gluten, they immediately start eating gluten-free grains like quinoa, uh, millet, uh, things like that. The reason you don't want to do that is you're going to very quickly and very easily develop some new food sensitivities to those gluten-free grains. And why that happens is because you probably have a leaky gut that has not been healed. So here's what you want to understand. When you develop gluten sensitivity, almost 100% of the time, you start developing something called a leaky gut. And here's what that is. If you can imagine in you know, your intestines, a, like a great wall of China, like a brick wall, lining your intestine, you know, not a lot of stuff supposed to get across the wall. Now, some things can get across, but not a lot supposed to get across. So if you can imagine a hole being punched in the wall or, you know, some mortar falling out between the bricks, some things that are traveling through your GI tract can pass through on the other side of the wall. Now, who's waiting on the other side of the wall? Your immune system. And they're not going to like that. They're going to see whatever that big thing is that's not supposed to come through normally, but is coming through now, they're going to see it as an invader. And they're going to try to attack it. This is a situation of increased intestinal permeability. And it's a huge source of inflammation. How do you get a leaky gut? Well, exposure to antibiotics do it. Uh, having an autoimmune condition like uh, Sjogren's or rheumatoid or Hashimoto's or MS, that's how you can get an autoimmune condition. But also, just having gluten sensitivity very often leads to um, leaky gut. Now, how do you know if you've got a gluten sensitivity problem? Well, you can't tell by your GI symptoms or lack thereof. GI symptoms are the least common presentation of gluten sensitivity. And it doesn't matter if you've been tested for celiac or not because celiac is only one kind of gluten sensitivity. The best way to get tested, uh, there's a lab in Arizona <clears throat> called Cyrex Labs that does some really good testing for gluten sensitivity. But beyond that, what I'm talking about is the mistake you make when you think, hey, I'm just going to switch from eating gluten to going gluten-free. Well, when you do that, there's a really good chance you have this um, kind of persisting leaky gut thing. And when you have a leaky gut and you eat these gluten-free grains and you've still got these holes in your wall, it's really easy to develop new sensitivities to quinoa or teff or millet or potato or rice. So what do you do? Well, when you go on a gluten-free diet, you don't immediately start eating all these gluten-free alternatives. What you should do is completely avoid those grains for 30 days and you should be working with someone that can help you make sure you've got a leaky gut handled. Uh, and there should be some people that know how to do that that are watching this, but you're looking for someone that really understands it. You do not want to go from eating gluten to now eating gluten-free pasta or gluten-free bread or you don't want to do that because it's a very good chance that what you're going to do over the course of a month or two is develop some new sensitivities. And what you might think to yourself is, you know, I don't really feel that much different. I'm going to go back to eating gluten. Well, the reason you probably don't feel better is because you still had a leaky gut and you developed an inflammatory problem with these new things. So you traded one inflammation for another inflammation and they weren't that much different. Now, for those of you that have already gone on a gluten-free diet and it was like a huge turnaround and you know, you're the, it's a totally new world, you probably got lucky and didn't develop too many sensitivities, but there's a very good chance you did. I come across people in my practice every day that have autoimmune diseases that have already eliminated gluten, uh, but they're still eating dairy, right? Or they're still eating uh, some other things. And what we typically do with those people is kind of start back from ground zero, and here's what usually happens. They end up feeling even better than they did before when they got rid of gluten. So uh, the first mistake that people make when they go on a gluten-free diet, and you're not going to make this mistake because I'm telling you, is you're not going to immediately start eating gluten-free grains because that's not a good idea. You want to make sure you've got a leaky gut uh, taken care of. Now there's a test you can do for a leaky gut, but you don't need to spend your money on it. You can just pretty much assume that if you've been eating gluten for very long, you probably have a leaky gut and you need to avoid all those gluten-free grains completely for 30 days before even trying anything. But to make it even better, work with someone who's trained, work with someone who understands leaky gut and gluten sensitivity.